Hello Internet, Big Dave here, and I would like to welcome you to the Weekend Roundup for the week ending on August 13th. This is the Weekend Roundup for free-to-play first-person shooter week, and that means that we're going to be taking a look back at all of the games. Now let me just quickly tell you the criteria which I'm using to judge these games. I'm using the outside the game interface, I'm using the shop, and all of the accoutrement that comes along with it, and I'm using the actual gameplay. So we will quickly review each game, compare and contrast between them based on those three categories. I will tell you I'm going to be putting some text on the screen, some notes that I took during playing these games so that I don't talk your ear off with too much information. So if you want to read those notes, you may want to switch to 720p mode right about now. So we started the week off with Combat Arms. You're going to see some gameplay footage from Combat Arms in the background, and we will start off by talking about the interface. When it came to interface, there were a couple of things that initially bothered me about Combat Arms. Number one, the game has to be launched from the website. Even the icon that's placed on your desktop during installation simply opens a web browser where you have to log in and press the play now button on the website. A little bit annoying, not the end of the world. Also, the menu system is stuck in 4x3 aspect ratio. Again, not the end of the world, it's just clunky, it's just weird, it's just annoying, <laughs> for lack of a better word. This game was uh, fairly feature rich, it had over almost a dozen features, it had over two dozen maps, tons of stuff going on. It had the uh, infected zombie mode called quarantine, and uh, it had some other interesting modes to offer. For interface, I'll give Combat Arms a 4 out of 5. Let's move on to the shop. Large selection in the shop, good stuff, lots of mods, lots of customization. Had a deep weapon mod system, actually. It had a lot of stuff going on with the weapon mod system. The deepest of the three games, for sure. Exclusively uses the Rent for X Day system. And uh, like all of these games, using pay currency will get you powerful weapons at very low levels. Otherwise, they're all gated by rank or level. So you've got to play, put some time in to get the better weapons with the in-game currency. Because of the large gun and item selection and the deep, deep weapon customization mode, I'm going to give the shop a 5 out of 5. And now let's talk about gameplay. When it came to graphics, the graphics were definitely a weak point, especially versus the other two games. It uses the Lithtech Jupiter EX engine, which was the same engine used for Fear 1 and 2, as well as a lot of games, especially Monolith Studio games. Visuals could really be improved. Was not that happy with the graphical style. The play had a good tactical feel, but one thing I'll tell you is that there is a large veteran player base, so there is a steep, steep learning curve for new players. Because of some of the weaknesses and the difficulty for new players to get into the game, I gave the gameplay a 3 out of 5. All in all, I enjoyed my time playing Combat Arms. I can definitely see why they're able to boast of 5 million registered users. It's solid gameplay, and the fact that it's not uh, super high-end on the graphics means it can be played on a lot of systems. Combat Arms has accumulated itself a score of 12. Now let's shift over to Project Blackout. Let's get some Project Blackout footage going in the background, and let's talk about the interface. Standard launcher on this, I like that. That's always nice. A little daily news ticker when you log in. It has a lot of useful information, and it's frequently updated with new events. Fantastic. It had the most in-depth character customization progression type system called the ACT system. Very, very fun. Of course, it had Dino Mode. Dino Mode was a blast. Dino Mode is my favorite mode out of all three of the unique type modes that these games have. Because of all that, Project Blackout grabbed itself a 4 out of 5 for Interface. Now let's move on to the shop. Again, we had a large selection of guns, lots of guns. We had lots of character customization options, and we had those premium items. Of course, one of those premium items was having to pay to be able to pick up opposing team guns. Didn't like that. There was also no real weapon customization to speak of. Weapons purchased with in-game currency are quantity-based. You have X amount of uses. Weapons purchased with pay currency are done on a day rental system. The shop for this game is so deep and so complete that despite not having weapon mods explicitly in the game, instead you have to buy weapons that are pre-modded for you, I still gave the shop a 5 out of 5. Because it has so many visual customizations, it has so many items that you can purchase to help uh, buff and perk your character, and it has a nice quantity-based system for those of us who are spending in-game money instead of real money. Now let's move on to gameplay. The graphics were definitely better than Combat Arms. They were slightly above average for this sort of game. They had a slightly cartoony feel. It's as if they were acknowledging the fact that they didn't have the best engine in the world. 
The engine was the iCube engine. Never heard of it. Couldn't find any other games made with it. The game was originally made in Korea, so maybe there's a slew of games over there that use it. The graphics were more colorful than either of the other two games we played, and the characters had distinct, unique models depending on what team you were on. This game was definitely the least tactical of the three. It felt a lot more like a, a run-and-gun shooter, um, though that's not necessarily a bad thing. With all of that taken into consideration, I gave Project Blackout a 4 out of 5 for gameplay. Overall, Project Blackout was definitely the most enjoyable experience of the three games. I had the most fun playing Project Blackout uh, as I did playing any of the other three games, especially in the deathmatch style maps, which really, really stood out. After everything said and done, Project Blackout grabbed itself an overall rating of 13. And last but certainly not least, we moved on to Alliance of Valiant Arms. Let's queue up that footage and let's talk about the interface. This game is integrated with Steam, which gives it a distinct advantage over the other two because I'm almost always logged into Steam. There's no login screen to speak of, again, because of the Steam integration. All in all, the menu system was fine. Little event boxes let you know what's going on in the game. Lots of game modes. It was a basic skill leveling system. Nothing really that great. They had a zombie mode, but I was more interested in the escort mode, which allowed you to escort a tank through a heavily fortified enemy street. For interface, AVA got a 4 out of 5. Moving on to the shop. Again, another large selection of weapons, good modifications in this game, visual customization options definitely lacking. They had a modding system that was not quite as full featured as combat arms, but it was still deep, allowing you to customize things such as triggers and stocks and all that good stuff. By far, the best thing the shop here had going for it was the fact that it used every single type of purchase system that I'd ever seen. It used a day-based rental system. It used a quantity-based purchase system. It used a one-time use gun. When you run the durability out, it's gone. And it used permanent repairable guns. And in fact, all of the guns that you purchase for in-game currency are permanent, but must be maintained and repaired. That was absolutely fantastic. And because of that, the shop garnered a five out of five. So finally we come to gameplay. The Unreal 3 engine allowed the graphics on AVA to really shine. It had hands down the best graphics of the bunch in my opinion. Uh, the graphics had a more realistic style than uh, either of the other two games, though it did have that drawback of character models being identical recolors, so there was no distinction between your team and their team. It had a fairly tactical feel, not as tactical as Combat Arms perhaps. Um, the shooting mechanics were kind of arcadey, there was some spray sometimes, but there was a really good feeling to it overall. And with all of those factors taken into consideration, I gave AVA a 4 out of 5. And with that 4 out of 5 on gameplay, that means that AVA's total score is 13. So as we look at the tallied scores, that means we have a two-way tie for first. Sorry Combat Arms fans, I know you are rabid and loyal, but I personally didn't see the value in the game as compared to the other two. I wish all you guys luck, but I will not be joining you as a Combat Arms player on a permanent basis. So with the points all tied up, what's the deciding factor? Well, I'm gonna go with fun. Honestly, I enjoyed myself the most in Project Blackout, even though it has what I would consider a nearly fatal flaw of not being able to pick up enemy guns without spending real money. I had fun playing the game. I hate to admit it because I really wish I could have just dismissed it uh, given that pickup weapon item that you have to buy. AVA was a lot of fun too and in fact it's a lot more tactical in nature in so many ways than Project Blackout. Honestly, I have to take the cop out and I have to actually call it a tie. I think when I want fast paced arcade style shooting, I'll go for Project Blackout. And when I'm looking for more military style tactical play, I'll go for AVA. So all in all, we had a great week this week. Combat Arms, Project Blackout, AVA. All fine games. I would recommend them to you. I would also recommend that you look into the numerous other free-to-play first-person shooters that are out there. There are many, and there are very, very good games that were not featured this week. Next week, guys, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to finish up a Brink video that I started during the free-to-play weekend last week. 
I had hoped that I could work the Brink video in in between the free-to-play first-person shooter games, but it just wasn't possible. These free-to-play first-person shooter videos just took up a beastly amount of time. So I'll finish the Brink video, and after that, well, I really don't know. But I can tell you right now, I've got an itchin' for some indie games, so we'll probably return to the more familiar format of the first dozen or so videos on Big Dave is Cheap as we pull out an indie game, dust it off, and make a video for all of you. All right, guys, that has been the weekend roundup for the week ending on August 13th. And until next time, take it easy.